Hey everybody, I'm John at Collect Cards. Hope you're all doing well. It is Tuesday, October 1st. Welcome to October Playoff Baseball. We're also one day uh, past um, losing the all-time hit king. Uh, Pete Rose passed away yesterday. That was a bit of a surprise, um, at least for me. I just I didn't know uh, didn't know that maybe was near. Um, so um, that did uh, take me a bit for a bit of a surprise. But um, yeah, um, he had uh, he had a baseball life that's for sure, um, in, in pretty much every way you can imagine. Um, but. You know, I wasn't a big Pete Rose collector, and I'm still not really. I do have a few of his cards. I'll probably pick up a couple more here and there along the way over the years. But, um, you know, just uh, wanted to just sort of uh, mention real quick, uh, uh, recognize the all-time hit king. Um, and it's a big loss, big, big loss for the sport. Um, in this video, uh, I'm actually doing a VR. Uh, it's about inspiration. And it's a VR for Zach and Porter who several weeks ago, about maybe a month ago or so, uh, surpassed 400 subscribers. So congratulations, Zach and Porter, on that really great milestone. And I wanted to take a few minutes and uh, talk about inspirations. Like he asked us to uh, ponder uh, who inspired us uh, in for the hobby. And um, maybe do we have a thought about who maybe we are inspiring in the hobby, either th if we have a channel through videos or just in, in other ways among friends uh, in the hobby. Um, and so, yeah, I thought I would uh, do, a little, uh, do a little video for that. So thanks for the opportunity to do so. Um, it, it, my answers are probably like a lot of others maybe that you've heard already. Um, my dad uh, was the main, main person who inspired me to collect. Um, he bought a pack of cards uh, for my brother and me almost every um, time he came off of work. We worked a lot of nights, so it was kind of cool in the mornings to see a pack of cards in the late 70s and early 1980s kind of waiting for us. Um, um, wax packs most of the time, an occasional cello pack, which was actually really cool. Seemed like a bonus on that on those mornings. Um, but he really kind of, uh, kind of got us started in it and got me started in it, in it. And I think a big reason for that was probably because he was the, uh, apparently... Uh, in that classic group whose moms threw out their baseball cards. So uh, he probably, he probably um, um, lived vicariously through us again a little bit in terms of the collecting. And he sort of collected himself a little bit with us. Um, I'd say more so after I got out of the hobby in the 90s. Um, I know my brother and, my, and our dad... Uh, kind of collected together the 1975 top set, and you know I'd hear about updates on that every so often, um, like when they picked up the Mike Schmidt or the Reggie Jackson. I think the Nolan Ryan was the last card they got for that, and um, uh, just overall, that's just a, a really cool, um, really cool accomplishment in the hobby to uh, to complete a 75 set. Um, but you know, he so my dad was the one who inspired inspired me to collect. And my brother, uh, Frank, actually got me, he inspired me to get back into the hobby. Uh, four years ago, four and a half years ago now, during the pandemic, uh, my stories like many others who kind of found their way back into their uh, kind of collecting days, uh, reminiscing and, and all of that, especially when, you know, baseball hadn't started until like June or July and just, uh, yeah, it was just a unique time. And it was a, uh, it was just great to embrace the hobby again. And I got to experience it in ways I never had before, um, which is fantastic. And I still, I, I still am kind of encountering new things in the hobby that I just love. Um, you know, I started the channel about two and a half years now, a little over that actually, closer to three than two. Um, after I got back in, so I got back in in 2020. I started the channel in winter of 22, and um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I'd say in terms of inspiring for a channel, to start the channel, um, folks like Mike Baseball Collector um, and um, uh, those back pages and, um, oh gosh, who are some other kind of older kind of channels who are out there. Uh, there, was, there were a few that definitely kind of got me thinking, gosh, maybe I should think about a channel because uh, I just have a lot to say um, and I'm very glad I did. 
Um, in terms of who maybe I have inspired, um, I think maybe I've inspired my brother in return, actually, a little bit, especially in the vintage area. Um, he occasionally will ask me a question uh, in the vintage part of the hobby, um, and I'm happy to answer best I can. Um, so I think that's that's been kind of cool. We got to meet up at the National earlier this summer and had a really fun couple of days there in Cleveland. Um, but uh, so I think that, and then... You know, maybe from time to time, based on some, you know, of the comments, I, I am really privileged to see on any video I do. I'm just, I'm, part of me is just still kind of blown away that my videos resonate with people, because I just like to schmooze about baseball cards, mostly. <laughs> um, occasionally, I'll talk about the game at large, um, and some of the history about baseball, aside from just the cards, but the majority of my videos are about the cards. Um... And you know, the, the, you know, I, I, gauge, I can gauge from some of the comments I get that uh, yeah, people are uh, um, people enjoy what I have to offer, which is great. Um, and on that note, I'm going to turn the camera around, and I want to actually read one of those comments um, that really kind of inspired me even more to collect. So it was like a mutual inspiration. Apparently, I inspired this person to comment the way he did, and which in turn has really got me. It got me so like excited to read it. It was just like, wow, that's just awesome. So I'm actually excited to read the comments to you. Hang on a second, let me turn the phone around. Okay, so um, I'm about to read the comment. And um, you see on the left side of your screen here, a card that I showed about a month ago in a video. It's the first 1933 Gaudi card I've picked up, and it's still the only one I have picked up. I'm about to actually send it off to SGC for grading. Possibly uh, by the end of this week, I've got about a, I think I've got a five card order worked up. I don't think it's going to be any more than five, but um, looking forward to getting them out. I believe it's going to be this week, uh, toward the end of the week to get them out. This is Charlie Grimm, uh, player manager of the Ch Chicago Cubs at this time. Um, he had just taken in 1932, he had just taken over as manager during the season and uh, kind of guided the Cubs to a National League pennant, the first of three pennants he um, won as a Cubs manager. Um, so I was talking about this card a decent amount in that video where I picked it up and shared it for the first time, and I'm going to have a link to that video below in the description. But about two weeks after I shared this video, that video, I picked up, or I, I've, well, I picked up my computer, I guess, went into my email and saw this. Uh, that I had gotten a comment from a Brad Grimm, 6244. And gosh, did he send me an amazing comment. So I'm going I'm to take it off the screen here. I just wanted to show you, uh, show you the, uh, the person who sent it there. Um, and I'm going to keep the card on screen while I read his, um, his comment that really, it was, it's one of the best comments I've ever got on my channel. Uh, so here it is. Brad Grimm. I've been a long time collector and really enjoyed this video. Charlie Grimm was my great uncle, AKA my grandfather's brother. He's long forgotten by most, but he really did have one of the longest and most varied careers in baseball history. He started out as a peanut vendor at Sportsman's Park, home of the St. Louis Cardinals, and got the opportunity to throw and shag balls with the players before the game, and somehow or another parlayed that into a tryout and spot on the roster. Shortly thereafter, at 17 years of age, he was facing the likes of Walter Johnson, struck out on three pitches with the bat on his shoulder, and says he didn't see any of them, they were so fast. He had a long playing career, and eventually player manager in 1932. He had three managing stints with the Cubs, and one with the Boston-Milwaukee Braves in the 1950s. He was also a broadcaster, part owner of the Milwaukee Brewers, AAA at that time, with Bill Veck, executive and scout. All in all, his career spanned well over 50 years. On top of all that, he was known for being a comedian and entertainer. He played banjo as, as a part of a team band that would entertain the fans before the game. He would often perform skits and comedy during parties, meetings, and public events. He's the manager with the dejected look holding his head up with his hand in the Norman Rockwell painting, The Dugout. His autobiography is Jolly Charlie's Story. If you ever want to read more and also get a great feel for the history and fun of the game during the times that he was active. I have my grandfather's copy that he signed with a personal note. 
he is definitely in the Hall of Fame for characters of the game. So that was Brad Grimm's comment to me off my video um, from a couple weeks ago. And um, I wrote him back this thank you on, uh, as a comment back. Brad, thank you so much for this wonderful comment. I really enjoyed seeing it in my inbox today and enjoyed reading it even more. Your great uncle certainly had an amazing career in life in baseball, and it's been a pleasure to learn more about him and his contributions to the game. So there's my uh, little dollop of inspiration there uh, that I wanted to share for this video. So uh, Zach and Porter, thanks again for the opportunity here to, to kind of offer up a, a response to your uh, call for VRs. Um, this was really fun to do, and I guess the timing of uh, receiving that comment was uh, perfect because it just uh, this was the perfect uh, opportunity to share it. So enjoy the playoffs, everybody. Um, I'm recording this uh, during opening day of the wild card series. The Tigers already won today. The Royals already won today. So, gosh, things are uh, off and running with the visiting teams already uh, striking first. So I think it's going to be a really great October. Can't wait till Shohei Otani's uh, on the field in his first playoff game. And then Aaron Judge and Juan Soto together for the Yanks. We'll see what they do. But, uh, yeah, that'll do it from here. Thanks again, everybody. And I'll see you on the next video.